David, silage pits and wall panels. How common are wall panels on silage pits? On silage pits now in the UK, yeah, they, they're probably 50-50. We still, we still pour a few, a few walls. Um, so we have three options really with a silage pit wall. Same as we've got here, so a steel, steel column, stanchion, whatever you want to call it, with a, um, a silage pit panel bolted to the front face of it. Um, as we said before, this will be a loaded panel, so the weight can be pushed on this side of it, single loaded, no silage pit the other side. Quick, simple, cheap, if you need to alter it or if you need to move the panels. Uh, we could go um, three one metre panels, I think these are 1.2 metre panels, um, or we could go three one metre panels, make a three metre high, we could go four metre high, um, but we have to take into account the size of the steel and the loading on the columns. Um, need to be structurally calculated. Uh, there'll be a, a big base of concrete around that. Um, ideally, I'd like to offset my, my silage pit so the toe of the, the foot in will actually come further into the silage pit than it will behind. So that when the weight of the silage is in the building and this concrete's all reinforced and tied to the pad, the weight of the silage is actually holding the post, the weight of the post up as well. Okay. Um, we're trying to stop, we're trying to stop the law of physics pushing the pushing the side of the silage pit out. The other option we could go for is poured, um, which is quite common in Ireland. Um, so shutters either side, reinforcing in it, and then pour concrete in from the top. Yeah. Similar situation again, still want a decent footing on it. Um, I would recommend galvanised steel stanchions if you can afford that a little bit extra. Just stops that the rotting at the base of it. Um, the other, then the advantage of poured is that if we wanted to build another silage pit on that side, we have a flush wall on both sides of the pit. Yeah. The problem with this is if we wanted to build another silage pit that side, we couldn't push against those panels from the back. We could if they were dropped inside the web, but they'd need to be double loaded panels. Uh, and we'd always have that offset of stanchion in one pit or the other pit for the yeah. tires to clip against when you're book raking. And then the third option is, is, a, is a prefabricated vertical panel. Um, several different ways of doing it. They have a, it's basically like a, a wall panel, but stood on its end vertically, yeah. sits in a cradle, which is concreted onto a foot in, usually up to a metre below finished floor level. And then you pour concrete either side of that. And that basically is, is stood up and is, is structurally reinforced to take weight from both sides. Um, not a common construction in the UK, but um, for a double sided panel is quite cost effective. And the last option we have is, is a basically a T-shaped T panel or an A panel, uh, which is an inverted T. So it's cast concrete at the bottom and then with an upstand that sits on a base of, of dry mix concrete and then you pour your, your floor up to it. It's tied, rebars tied into the floor slab. Um, they're a bit more common, um, quite a quick construction once you've got your footing, footing laid and uh, quite quick to, to lay in place. They make a corner panel, uh, they make an internal wall, um, and it'll make a quite quick and robust. Um, the other thing to think about is the handrail around the top. It is something that is forgotten about, or it's just an additional expense that, that sometimes people don't want to spend, but it, it's a must. If you're, and it, it, a lot of people think, oh, it's for the book rake man to make sure he knows where the edge of the pit is. Yes, that is the case. But in my opinion, when you're coming to sheet this pit up and you're walking along the edge of there and you're putting your sandbags on mm. or your tyres and you're sheeting up, that's there to stop you falling off the side yeah. of the pit. It's a must. It is a must, uh, yeah. Um, as Mark discussed, he's got this, this extra bit of timber just for fixing his, his side sheet too. Yeah, which is very useful. Yeah, yeah, a good idea. Uh, yeah. I've seen them before where they drape the sheet over the top of the stanchion and just let it sort of dangle down the sides. The trouble with that is when the grass gets pushed into the pit and the grass naturally pulls down on the sheet, it just rips holes in it where it yeah. goes over the top of the stanchion. So yeah, like Mark's idea there, really, really good. And the steel pillars obviously help there. Yes. For fixing to. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Um, but yeah, quick, simple uh, concrete panel construction. This is obviously, it's a fair age. It was here before Mark came. It's still uh, standing the test of time. One or two of the stanchions are just starting to show signs. Uh, of probably getting need and replacing. The panels are uh, showing some surface um, where oh, yeah. um, it's just the, the acid from the silage is just eating into the concrete, but maybe that was before Mark started sheeting the sides if there right. was just clean grass straight against the sheets. Yeah, um, the contact, again. the plastic is helping to prevent that direct contact. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, you'd no need to spec a, a specific grade for the concrete for these panels um, because they, they 
the concrete panel manufacturer will be to a higher grade than you would have done for the floor anyway. Mm. You're probably talking C60, C50, C60. The floor concrete, um, yeah, you definitely want to be at least C40, 45, possibly a 50. Uh, something really strong that's going to take the wear. 50 Newton? 50 Newton, yeah. yeah. And what depth? Traditionally, it would have always been a 150 mil, a six inch. That's not big enough any longer. Kits got bigger, trailers are bigger. Uh, you're talking 30, 30 tonne gross weights now coming in and, and even beyond that. And when the loading shovel is pushing and going up and you're, you're looking at a, probably a 20 tonne loading shovel, no, 200 mil, 250 even. Um, ideally reinforced with steel that ties into the columns at the side, but as a minimum fibre reinforcing. Uh, two types of fibre reinforcing for the concrete. We've got um, structural fibres or we've got crack inducing fibres. The structural fibres are um, as strong as putting steel um, into the concrete. Um, they're, a, they're a manufactured uh, plastic product. Um, if you go to the right company, um, they will give you a calculation of how many kilograms of fibre you need to add per metre to, to get the equivalent of putting in A393 mesh or 252. Whatever spec you wanted in mesh, you would add the fibres to achieve that same, same level of finish. Um, in, in, traditionally in this area, um, we have a mix of concretes. We can either have gravel or we can have limestone. Um, Gravel concrete um, is fine for concrete yards, um, for passageways and for yards, but on a silage pit, I would always prefer a limestone um, concrete. Um, basically, the limestone will wear at the same level as the surrounding concrete. So as the loading shovel's pushing into it, you won't get those stones from the gravel, mm. the stones coming out into the concrete and then getting into the, into the silage. And you will see, if you go to walk down the, the feed, barriers on a gravel silage pit you will see stones in the face of the of the feed face um, so ideally if you can go for a limestone product I know in Ireland there, there are gravel um, that's traditionally yeah what they can get hold of and I understand that it's it's all it's to do to with people, yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but if you can spec a limestone product I also like that in a, in a parlor as well traditionally um, and a cubicle building a limestone especially if you're especially on sand bedding you, you can wear at the same the same level. Okay, so we've seen also in some places um, tarmac or asphalt. Asphalt, is the, yeah, yeah, tarmac and asphalt. Asphalt is the is the dense fine, so it's more like a sand grade um, tarmac. Um, yeah, we've we've been working on projects with asphalt uh, silage pits for for quite a few years now. Does it last? I, yeah, I was a bit sceptical of it when it first came and was introduced um, and having seen big loading shovels pushing on, on it and it just sits there slipping on top of it and it yeah. doesn't. Uh, so key to that one, uh, and the same with any construction of, of a floor slab, is compaction of your sub base and making sure you get your, your tarmac laid down professionally um, by a decent contractor. Sealed around the edges, make sure it's got any expansion joints it needs in it, but make sure you don't get any effluent going underneath it. When they fail is because something's gone underneath it. Either the book rake or the loader has dug into it and broken the surface. Mm. Uh, they will never fail unless the surface has been damaged in some way. Yeah. And if you're laying concrete for a, for a silage pit like this, say, or whatever, how long would you leave it before you put silage on it? In the ideal Traditionally, way? concrete, the old, the old timer's way of saying was an inch, uh, an inch a, a week. Um, before you could run on it. Um, so if it was a six inch concrete, six days before you run on it. Um, sorry, an inch a day, not an inch a week. Um, the longer you can leave a silage pit, the better. Um, I think the recommendation on it now would be at least eight to 12 weeks. Yeah. Um, basically the silage effluent will eat into the fresh concrete. It will dissolve it. If you, it's like, it'll, it'll fizz. It's like acid dissolving into the surface of it. And you are going to spoil you're basically a very expensive concrete floor if you go on it too soon. Sometimes circumstances dictate that for whatever reason you've had to renew the, the concrete and the time scale between the the uh, silage coming in and the concrete being laid. Discuss it with your concrete supplier. Um, they, will be, they will have a product that they can add to that concrete to make it cure quicker mm. or to exceed the Newton level of the basic concrete. It's going to cost you. It'll cost you one, two, three pound a metre more um, but it's worth it in the long run. Yeah. So don't just go with your normal standard concrete, chuck it down and hope for the best. 
Um, I have known of scenarios where they've put the silage on the concrete too soon and the concrete's actually gone soft. So the whole, si the whole six inch layer of concrete has soaked the effluent into it and it's become soft. Yeah. They've ended up digging the whole pit out. Yeah. That's an expensive... An expensive mistake, yeah. yeah. So, so pl planning. Um, yeah. Just, just so there are some maybe additives or, or things that you can buy that will buy you some time in a way. Yeah, that you can put on the surface. Yeah. There is also treatments. Um, there's several companies in the UK that manufacture products for repairing silage pits and for, for putting treatments onto the surface hardeners, onto the concrete. Um, they even make products that you can put onto silage pit walls. Um, so if you've got some crumbling or stone crumbling, uh, there's resins that you can apply. Yeah. But that's that's a s not something you'd want to do. It's a to try and get you yeah, out of a situation. That. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks.